Hey everybody, it's Matt from Electric All Wheel. You can see here that from the distant eye, these bikes look the same, but I assure you they are not. This is the Hemiway Cruiser, this is the Troxxas Volcanus, and in general they're the same, but we're going to take you through a lot of the differences in specification, material connection types, and layout, riser, rider, and user comfort in terms of control, and the bike itself. 26 by 4 fat tires, 48 volt systems, but different bikes. The Volcanus comes in at $14.99, manufacturer suggested retail price, and the Cruiser is $16.99 from Hemiway. Uh, what you'll find in the past few months, and it is May 14th, $999, $13.99 on sale. But what we wanna show you is what is the true difference for them and how this video can help you make a decision on which one to purchase. Here we go. All right, here we go. First things first, we're gonna look at the brake calipers. Both the Hemiway, which has the Tektro Aries, and the Volcanus have Tektro components. What you'll notice for this is that the Aries is a step above in terms of quality and also the orientation. If you'll notice the caliper is to the rear of the wheel versus the caliper being internal to the frame for the rear dropouts of the rear motor. This becomes important when you try and do your adjustments. So you'll have to reach through the frame area for the Troxxas to get to your adjustment to the brake versus with the Hemiway, it's actually the same thing, but adjustment can be had from the rear versus having to get after it in front of the motor in this space of the bike. Both the Troxxas and the Hemiway are using the Shimano Altus derailleur. So in terms of that consideration, it would be components around it, otherwise same derailleur. So this is the Hemiway and this is the Volcanus and they're both on the Shimano Altus derailleur. So for the Hemiway, the, you might think that this derailleur guard is here for the derailleur itself, but it is not. It is here for the wiring. It's for the wiring coming straight out the center line of this axle. And one thing you'll want to notice is that on the Troxxas Volcanus is not, and they have caps on this rear axle, and I really like that. What they did was their output for the motor cable comes in between the frame and the brake rotor, so it is highly protected. If this bike goes down on its side and no real damage is sustained to the frame, the, the cable is not going to be exposed. For this Hemiway, if this thing gets smashed in, this cable is at high risk. And it's a common situation that a lot of people have to deal with. So it's something to consider. The Troxxas definitely wins the motor cable placement on this uh, in terms of which one I would rather have. Another consideration is the motor cable connection types for both of the bikes. Now this is the Hemiway and <laughs> I got to put this out there as well. If you get to a point where you need to change the gear set for cassette or freewheel, whichever e-bike uh, you have, and it has this Shimano set, which is the exact same Shimano set here on the Troxxas, the most popular tools for removing them are the consent and freewheel removal tools from Park Tools. But you'll notice that neither one of these fit on the Hemiway. So you need to consider this factor when looking at your bikes in general. I'm not exactly sure how the Hemiway repair specs say to remove their gear set off of their rear hub. I know for a fact that this one will work because the wire comes out on the other side of the, the hub assembly rather than on the gear set side like the Hemiway. So another point for Troxxas for that orientation because we both, we understand that both have a very big plug set. I'll show you this Troxxas real quick. 
So here is the Troxxas plug. And it is just as wide. This is the placement for the Hemiway Cruiser controller. And you can see that it runs these critical wires right down below the bottom bracket, which I'm not a big fan of. And it exposes the controller to any impact endured while out doing whatever kind of riding is possible with this e-bike. The Troxxas Volcanus doesn't have that. They fit the controller underneath the seat tube and extended out the rear frame components on the dropouts from the bottom bracket so that they could fit the controller here. However, it does have the same wiring at a critical spot right here where the bottom bracket is. So both companies, I would say, should give consideration for that or include some kind of skid plate to make sure to protect that because that is a very critical wire placement in terms of e-bike usage, especially for off-road bikes like these two. One very obvious addition that is included with the Hemiway is this rear rack. It is a nice rack with a wooden platform, bolt mounted to the frame already, but we must say that the Troxxas Volcanus does have the mounting bolts for a rear rack. We're not sure if they have it as a very common accessory, but we do know that we could likely get an aftermarket that would work with that setup. So good job for Hemiway. This is a plus for Hemiway in terms of having a rear rack included versus not with the Troxxas Volcanus. We're moving on to the batteries. They are, are largely similar in their 40, 48 volt systems, but there's a few differences that I wanted to share with you. The Hemiway battery is more of a hybrid style. We can say that it's integrated to the frame, but it does have an external cradle that it mounts to with a custom key lock. The battery is pretty easily removed. You just turn the key, it, you'll feel it pop, and then it comes out. There's nothing to it. The battery on the Hemiway is a 48 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery, which leads the Troxxas, which is also a 48 volt battery by one and a half amp hours. The Troxxas battery is just the same. There's a little bit more tension and removal. And then it has this handle, which I really am not a big fan of because I feel like after so many uses, this is gonna break off. So I have developed my own standard operating procedure of just pushing from the side. Also, this battery has the USB port on the side, whereas the Hemiway does not. Don't worry, the Hemiway does have a USB port. It is underneath the display. So in all, I'm a bigger fan of the Hemiway. In the event that the cradle gets crashed, the bike frame is still intact. If you remove the battery on this one, the cradle is more internal to the frame, which means that some of that structural durability has been given way to making this uh, semi-integrated battery into the frame. And therefore my pick, or I would say that I prefer the style of the Hemiway battery and also it has one and a half more amp hours. If you've watched our channel for a while and you know, Electric All Wheel provides dual battery discharge balance kits for the Hemiway and Troxxas. They are 40 amp dual battery discharge balancers. Now, one thing we do know is that after our experience, the Troxxas Volcanus utilizes an XT60 connection. This is what it's actually gonna look like. They have it shrink wrapped, but this connection comes out of the cradle into the controller with XT60, so this is your power connection. Whereas the Hemiway utilizes a mutual connection at the controller that looks like this. They are equivalent in their purpose. They are just different connectors. And so electric all wheel has put together kits and you can see those in some of the videos that we will link in the description below for these bikes specifically, and they are already pre-wired because we wanted to have that ability to move forward.
XT60 connection on the Troxxas Volcanus is a very, very common connection and we like it. The mutual connection, which you see on Rad Power Bikes, Hemiway, Magicycle, and quite a few other bikes as well. We have those kits and those are they are available to you at electricallwheel.com in the shop on Shopify. Just check out our website, YouTube, and you will be able to get there. You can also purchase them on Facebook. What you'll notice is that the key is specific to the cradle for the battery on the Hemiway, which means that you have a pretty easy replacement if you ever have to remove this cradle or something happens to your key situation. On the Troxxas it's a bit of a different scenario whereas this whole insert is there and that means that when you remove it your frame plating is larger on the right hand side than it is on the left hand side. So structural durability took a hit in terms of a full tube which you have here on the Hemiway. On the left, we have the Troxxas included package for charging and the user manual with the tools. Uh, already, I can tell you that this Hemiway setup for included tools is pretty awesome. They've even got uh, socket heads in here, which is great. Uh, lots of Allen selection, and then you have your general flat and Phillips, and you also have, oh yeah, some pry tools, etc. It just goes on and on. This is a wrench set. So I'm really, I'm a big fan of this one. I know that might be overkill because generally I would never use this anyway. Uh, this comes with the Troxxas and I did notice that there were a couple screws on the bike that were not available with this included gear uh, tool set. The charger. Troxxas is gonna win this uh, if, it's, if it's a battle. They are including a charger with UL certification and it's on the charger itself. Not only that, but it's output at three amps. So this thing is gonna charge the e-bike way faster than this one. Uh, keep in mind that a faster charger means less battery cycles. So the lifetime of your battery may be depleted with a quick charger versus a slower charger like this Hemiway. This is the two amp uh, to 54.6 volts. So Troxxas is winning in the charge speed, although their battery is one and a half amp hours smaller. Troxxas is losing in every way when it comes to their manual. If you want a better manual for the Hemiway, better than this, which is already good, uh, try the Zebra step through. But let's go ahead and take a look. This is the Troxxas manual. And one thing you'll notice right away is the text sizing for both. And this Hemiway makes it nice and clear, the picture and the layout, the extension, the effort put into making this manual longer in page width is worthwhile. Especially text size, the paper feels good. I really, really appreciate the, uh, the grammar usage as well. These things matter, so that's nice. Uh, I would expect that an equivalent PDF be online uh, for both. I am not sure that that's there, but right now Hemiway is putting it in for the capabilities of readability for the user manual on their bikes. Troxxas needs to step it up here. This is important. Troxxas Volcanus Hemiway Cruiser. When we're looking at the handlebar setup, the Hemiway Cruiser's got a much nicer grip selection, and then right out the gate, you have a right hand half grip twist throttle. The Tectropull brake handles have the rubber grip on them, which is nice. Uh, but I do wonder, because they are not branded, if they're actually Tectro. Regardless, the left hand has the integrated bell, and you can actually see that on the Troxxas Volcanus as well. What you don't see is a right hand half grip twist you see a left hand thumb throttle on the Troxxas Volcanus. So if you're purchasing based on that, go with the Volcanus. I am a huge fan of the thumb throttle. I just prefer to have it on the right hand side. But what happens is that gets intermixed with your selection for your gear shift. This Shimano seven speed is a super popular gear shift. You see it everywhere, electric, Hemiway, it goes on and on. I've used it. I prefer trigger shift, but in terms of the layout for the handlebars, they had to choose the left-hand side so you had no obstruction here if you had a throttle so that they could select the trigger shift instead of the 
overhand Shimano gear shift. They do both have custom displays. They're power button is separated here and everything is over the top and visible on the Hemiway. Uh, the layout is pretty general. There's your pad selection speed and then it has a bunch of information in terms of odometer. You've got time ride, your max speed, your average speed, your trip, and then back to odometer. Now for your Troxxas, it does have a lot of the same ODO, you have your max speed, average speed, amp hours on the battery, the trip, and then your odometer. However, the layout for this is a little cumbersome. These buttons are on the side, and I'm not a big fan of those. They're, it's not really user friendly. I would like a more prominent power button as well, but it does get the job done. So in terms of technical accessibility and comparable use, they both have those settings. It does diverge when it comes to the use of the settings within the system. Both bikes will allow you to change the total number of paths settings. So right now this one is set to five or nine actually. I programmed it to nine and I did the same thing for the Hemiway. It, they both have the ability to preset your path selection zero through five or zero through nine. I like a bigger breakdown in power distributed through the path selections for both bikes. However, the Troxxas Volcanus caps out at 20 miles an hour on throttle only, and that is it. The Hemiway will allow you up to 25 miles an hour, and I believe that's a newer, uh, a newer setting, and some of the older cruisers will move past that, but generally they're trying to keep this class two speed limit in check. Don't forget, the Hemiway has the USB port underneath its display, whereas the Troxxas has the USB port on the battery itself. So they are both available. The Hemiway has it accessible through the display, which if you have your phone mounted up on your handlebars, which is going to be difficult with this setup, then it will be there easy to use. This one you would have to string it along the frame and bring it up to your handlebars if you wanted to connect to a, a phone for power. So if you get into the wiring of these bikes, you start to notice your preferences and you start to realize what's actually out there in the aftermarket and easy to get your hands on rather than moving through the manufacturer's parts list for purchase. That being said, I wanted to show you a couple of the differences here between the Troxxas and the Hemiway so that you'll have an understanding of what you're getting into if you've got to make any modifications later on. First things first, the wiring and excess wiring for the Hemiway and the Troxxas. What I do know is that Troxxas has minimized the amount of brake cabling that they put in their cable set up front. So what happens is if you go to raise these handlebars, you do not have the room or the excess length in your cabling to do so. And you actually have to replace the brake cable and their housings as well so that you can get some elevation out of your handlebar set. The Hemiway does include enough excess that you can actually see it here that provides you a little room to get even more uh, extension if you want to put an extension stem on there or if you want to put higher handlebars. So keep that in mind if you think that you're going to have to make a rider orientation so you're more upright versus over the bike itself. Another thing you'll notice is the cable wrapping. Now this is the Troxxas Volcanus and I actually do like these. However, I realize that it's more to just bind up the two different groups and these actually put the display cabling at risk because it's actually tensioned under these wraps. So I would think I might look for an another way to do that. But when you get over here to the Hemiway, it is moved from minimal to non-existent. They do have a couple of these uh, K 
cable wrap and clips, but what you find is they come off easy. These are actually Velcro straps, which are nice. I just think there should be more of them with the Hemiway. So I appreciate the effort with the Troxxas in terms of a more thorough wrap, but the rest of it is just zip ties where Hemiway provided a Velcro strap that will make it a lot easier for reuse. Now let's get to something that is very important. Let's say you have to replace your handle. The connection for the Hemiway are these two pin Gillette styles and that's fairly common. You can see a lot of these in aftermarket so I appreciate this. The harness connections, Gillette, they typically are referred to as waterproof are pretty common and we like that and we're also we see it here too on the light connection so we are appreciative of that. When we come over here to the Troxxas though, these are much different connections and I'm not sure that you're going to be able to find these on the open market, which means that if you move to a scenario where you want to put aftermarket parts on here, you are going to have to cut and splice or find the exact specific component that matches with this style of connector and they are not common from what I've seen. The throat on this is much deeper here versus what you see with the Hemiway on this Gillette connector. Both of the bikes come with front suspension forks and they have the lockout adjustments as you see here on the Hemiway. Uh, you can also see this one on the Troxxas as well, same style, and then the rotation for lock or suspension. Another difference where Hemiway takes it is the front axle. There is a quick release on the Hemiway here, and I'm a big fan of that. It's just nice and easy to take the front tire and wheel set off with a quick release. But with the Troxxas, you actually have the caps, which I still am a fan of, but on the front, I would really rather have the Hemiway quick release so that I can get this tire and wheel set off of the bike quickly. Both the Hemiway and the Troxxas utilize Kenda tires and they're 26 by fours but one thing where the Hemiway takes it is it has a reflective band around the sidewall of the tires so Hemiway wins this one for a tire selection. These are pretty bright they do show up well at night with reflections so on this one Hemiway made the better choice in the tire selection. I showed you earlier the connection for the headlight here here on the Hemiway and this is the headlight itself and it's quite large puts out a lot of light uh, there are a lot of conversation points for this headlight for the Troxxas I think that it is a con foregone conclusion that you're gonna need another light for this bike likely for the Hemiway too but definitely for this one I will say that the connection types were not great either for the Troxxas and it was difficult to actually get them on there and I do wonder about their output for aftermarket. We're very familiar with this style and know you can get an aftermarket light that will work on this uh, Hemiway Cruiser but this Troxxas Volcanus is likely going to take a separate battery charged light or some rewiring to get this done. You'll also notice on the bikes, the Hemiway has the, the tail light underneath and it does work, but it is underneath the real rack versus the Troxxas. It has a tail light, but it's only on one side of the bike and it's a vertical set and they did not place another one. So it's not symmetrical on the bike at all. So there it is right there. And then you don't have one on this side. So you're missing from this angle, whereas uh, Hemiway has it straight down the middle on the rear rack. The pedals for the bike are generally the same. The, where you start to see a major difference is the chain. So this is the chain for the Hemiway. And then here is your chain for the Troxxas. On this one, Hemiway takes it. Uh, I can't imagine that there isn't some durability with the Troxxas chain, but having familiar with working with these chains and getting into them, I would much rather have this chain from Hemiway than the one from the Troxxas back there. Both of the frame stylings for the Troxxas and the Hemiway are very similar. They've got an, a crossbar with a dip, and you can imagine that the styling based on who came out with the frame style first uh, was a direct 
uh, copy, we'll call it benchmark for whoever was second. And I believe that that would be Troxus. Uh, benchmark specifications, etc. I think Hemiway was leading the way with all of them. They do have some subtle differences though. Hemiway does have the mounts for the rack and it's already in place. But what you'll notice on the Troxus is the spacing between the, the seat tube and the rear wheel set. So it's actually done so the controller can fit in between there. One thing I do like about the Troxus is the square tubing on the rear, and this is good for accessory mounts aftermarket where you're actually having to do some work on them. That doesn't take away from the Hemiway circular tube, right? There are straps. I am just a big fan of flat surfaces for connection. Ironically, you get more of that on the Hemiway crossbar on the high side for the cruiser versus the curved crossbar on the Troxxas Volcanus. All right, we've taken you through them. I'm actually gonna take this uh, chest mount for my GoPro, which it's actually being filmed on right now, and then take these both out for a ride just to show you a couple of the differences. One thing I wanna stress with this and one that is extremely important in my opinion is the ability for any user to get into the settings of the Hemiway and change the power percentage allocation to each level of PAS. Meaning, if I only have five levels of PAS, a lot of bike manufacturers start out that first power input at like 25. And a lot of electric riders will know this because electric got a lot of grief for PAS 1 being very jerky. A lot of power in PAS 1. One thing I was able to do with the Hemiway is break down that percentage to 11% per PAS and I took the PAS levels all the way to 9. So PAS 1 is 11%, PAS 9 is 99 or 100% of the power allocation for that PAS setting. And that makes it less jerky when you're trying this. The start is not as abrupt for the Hemiway as it will be for the Troxxas. So that's something as well to keep in mind for new bike riders that ability to control the power allocation per pass setting, not just break down a more wide range pass setting of one through nine, but you can actually change the power allocation percentage per pass level. So good job on Hemiway's part for making that accessible. Troxxas, I think that's something to look for, but it also will cut into the price point uh, if they're trying to sell at $14.99. We are out here at the Pinellas Trail. I'm gonna take the Hemiway Cruiser and we are gonna give it a test ride. I've got the camera on so you can check this out and you'll see what I'm doing during the ride. Paz one, there's nothing much to it. Six miles an hour on the phone. We're showing about seven on the bike itself and it's more of my effort than anything else. And that is because of the percentage PAS allocation power distribution that I was talking about just a moment ago. We're gonna bump that up to two and this is 22% and still it is more of me than it is the bike. We're about seven to eight miles an hour. On pass three at 33%, now we're moving into the nine to 10 miles an hour range. And I can see that the bike is doing more than my minimal effort in pedaling. Pass four, all right, now we see the, the meter for the pass selection, which is your amp distribution on the display go up about 13 miles an hour, 44% power distribution for the bike itself. Paz 5, right about now we're doing 16, 17. here and do a round here. Now let's go get them. I'm gonna put it on PAS 9. We'll show you what it's all about. PAS 
has nine. 26, I saw it. The phone is reading 24. Looks pretty accurate. And that should be your top speed. So if it's fractional for the phone, then it's doing all right. 24, 25 miles an hour for the Hemiway Cruiser, Paz 9. What I'll do is I'll turn around and just give it throttle only and see where we go from there as well. No pedaling, we're just gonna throttle only. So the bike is saying 24.5, 25 miles an hour. The phone readout is capping at 24. Let me see if I can push that. So it looks like my phone app may have a cap at 24, but it's still accurate with the readout on the display. So 26 miles an hour is the fastest you're gonna see on the Hemiway Cruiser throttle only. I weigh 238 pounds at the moment, so you can understand what it's up against. It is not a windy day. So we're out here with the Troxxas Volcanus. Uh, I have the camera on, so I'll give you a rundown on this bike and then we'll show you some of the subtle differences between the two in terms of rideability. I have them both preset to nine. You saw on the Hemiway it was PAS one through nine or zero through nine and the Troxxas is set the same way. So keep that in mind in terms of what to expect when you get out of the box. Nice bike. Thank you. Nice bike, nice bike, nice bike. All right, so we're on PAS 1. I know it's kicked in and I can feel a, a higher power distribution in PAS 1 for this, but the increment's not bad. And like I mentioned before, I have electrics and I'll tell you like that power allocation at 20% or above on PAS 1 really sucks. This doesn't jerk you out as much. If it was on one through five, I believe the power distribution for PAS 1 would be higher in percentage. So this isn't bad. And, and I'm, I'm thinking less about the Hemiway's ability to assign the percentage level for each PAS setting. So PAS 2, we are 11, 12 miles an hour. And so, let me see. It looks to be pretty accurate. The phone is showing 12, 13 miles per hour, the display 13, 13 and a half. And I think this only goes up by at 0.5. So at 13.4 and below, it's gonna show 13 miles an hour. So pretty accurate. Let's go ahead and get it at pass four. We're pedaling. Phone is at 16, bike 17, bike showing 18. There's 18 on the phone, so that's accurate as well. Now we're gonna bump it up to PAS 9 and see what it does. So PAS 9, I'm pedaling. So, all right, 22.3, 23. All right, so there's no cap on that, on that level, so I'm happy about that. I am pedaling pretty hard, but we're hitting 24 miles an hour. So 25 miles an hour, there we go. The accuracy on between the phone and this display is better. I wonder if that is due to the diameter selection I wonder if that's due to the diameter selection of the tire or wheel in the settings and what the difference could be with the Hemiway and why it might not be preset. All right, I'm gonna turn it around and we're gonna give it throttle only. Ow. 
Okay, throttle only, and I believe this is gonna cap out at 20. the phone there's the bike all right 20 miles an hour and it flatlines at 20.0 so both looking accurate on speed like i said throttle on the troxes caps you at 20 miles an hour bummer but in reality like 20 is death speed if you go off of this without a helmet it's gonna hurt it's not gonna feel good and you will be injured so 20 miles an hour is almost too much anyway i do believe in that i think it's a good selection set for speed at a class two but keep in mind you will not be able to exceed 20 miles an hour with troxes with throttle alone One last thing before we go, I hope you enjoyed all of the information that was provided in this video. Uh, I need you to know though that Troxxas started out with this bike seat and there is no way that I am fitting on this bike seat. So I immediately changed that. Now when you're considering the price point difference, $16.99 on the Hemiway, $14.99 on the Troxxas and you consider a seat and the rear rack, and then just who you might be hauling come here buddy in terms of your friends uh i think that the hemiway takes the cake the added benefit of being able to change the settings in the hemiway to allocate the percentage paths is a nice feature to have the rear rack is good they lose a lot in terms of user repairability uh, like I showed you with the ability to get the freewheel cassette gear set off of the rear hub motor that needs to be thought about if you're in this game for the long haul uh, and the Troxxas is winning that all day long. Battery size, Hemiway comes out on top. Ability to upgrade the handlebars or bring them more upright, Hemiway's gonna win that too, but they are not outside the realm of capability with the Troxxas, so keep that in mind. Here's another thing. This is the real world factor for me. I bought this Troxxas for under $800, shipped and delivered through one of their uh, sales this past year. I got this Hemiway brand new out of the box, which was a unique purchase on Facebook Marketplace for $1,000. So it's doable. You just have to be ca cautious of the components and the things that are provided for you. And if you are unsure or don't know enough, then you need to get a brand new e-bike and judge your budget accordingly. So if we're picking one for the quality of components and overall accessibility for the user uh, versus its price, it's the Hemiway. But if you hit a Troxxas sale, this bike is worth the purchase. Go get it. If you see the $9.99 sale, pick it up. It's worthwhile. They are reducing the price on the cruisers lately. They're, I've seen them at $13.99 on sale at Hemiway, so you can start to understand the pricing differential right now, which means that if it is on sale, it's actually cheaper than the Volcanus. It is May 14th. Don't hold me to this. These manufacturers and all of the brands change this regularly, so just keep your eyes peeled. We'll talk to you next time.